Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I'm going to give you a really quick overview of Kepler's three laws. But before we start, please remember to subscribe, hit the bell to make sure you get my latest updates, and if you're feeling generous and support my work, by buying me a coffee. So let's go through it. At the time of Kepler, the understanding was that the planets moved around the sun in circular paths. By studying the data from Tycho Brahe, he established some important relationships, which we now know as Kepler's three laws. And the first one is really, really basic. It says that if we have the sun at a particular point and a planet is moving around that sun, then this is an ellipse. It's not circular. That's Kepler's first law. The second one is an extension from that. If we have our ellipse, and I'll make it a little bit more eccentric like so, then if you draw out two areas such as this and this, he said, well, if this time over here is the same as this time over here, that the area that the planet sweeps in those two times over here, area two and area one, well, they're exactly the same area. But in short, what that means simply is the further the planet is away from the sun, the slower it moves. And that's it. Kepler's third law looks not at one planet moving in an ellipse, but looks at multiple. And in this case, if you were to get our star, and you would examine any planet moving around that star. And I'm going to use two planets here, but I could use many planets as long as they're revolving around the same object. Then you have two radii here that you can measure. So this is radii two and radii one. And obviously the period that which it goes around will obviously also be different. The further away it is, the longer it takes. But what Kepler did was establish the mathematical relationship. And he worked out that if you cube the radius of one with its period and square that, well, that value, that ratio, ends up being the same ratio for our second planet, divided by, of course, by our t squared. In other words, the ratio of the cube of their radii divided by the period squared is a constant. And that, in essence, is Kepler's third law. And just as a side note, it was Sir Isaac Newton using the law of gravitation who worked out actually the value of that ratio and that ended up being equal to capital G, which is the gravitational constant, multiplied by m, which is the mass of the central body, divided by 4 pi squared. Kepler's three laws. Hope that's been helpful for you. Take care. Bye for now.